So glad to be with you this beautiful, not quite fall morning, Just almost fall. Hmm? Welcome those of you that are online. Welcome to those of you that are that are here in person. Uh, when I was younger, I was in middle school or high school. Uh, I used to to go to church, but but before I would go to church. Uh, I grew up in a great, we had a fantastic student ministry, just like Bruce Hughes. Let, let's see, Bruce, raise your hand real, right there, running the, the uh, Facebook Live. Let's give it up for Bruce. Absolutely. Bruce is doing just a fantastic job. In fact, the students are getting away for a, a weekend retreat, a fall weekend retreat, and there is still an opportunity. Uh, I think today is the deadline. If you're parents, if you want your child to go to that, but more kids make decisions in those type of getaways uh, than any other decision. And so if, you, if you're interested in that, just contact Bruce. But I remember going to, 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 to the youth group or the student ministry that I was part of, and I was filled with great anxiety. I mean, I, I would get I would get so nervous. I, I just was was worried. I was I was fearful. My face would turn flush red. My hands would start to sweat. I mean, you'd start seeing sweat drop off of my hands because I was filled with such anxiety about going into the student ministry. And it was back that back in the good old days when we actually used to shake people's hand. I mean, does anyone remember that? I mean, today it's kind of like you see people and, and you quite don't know. Do they want 12 feet? Do they want 6 feet? Do they fist bump? Do they elbow? Or do they just wave? And you're kind of like, oh, whoa, I'm trying to fill this thing out. Like, I don't know. What do I, what do, I do? How do I navigate this? Do I put, oh, no, oh, oh, and I'm dodging, you know, we're dodging. But back in the good old days when we used to shake hands, and it was awful for me because I was filled with such anxiety, my hands would just drip with sweat. I mean, not quite literally, but and I loved it when it rained out because it would mask uh, my anxiety. But here's the thing. I loved Jesus and I loved the church, but I was filled with anxiety. And I remember I would go to the youth group and I would sit in the far back room because there were probably 70 to 80 kids that were in the student ministry and I would sit in the far back because I lived in constant fear that someone was going to ask me to read because I had dyslexia and I knew how that would go down so the teacher and people because I was outgoing and people didn't quite know the anxiety that I felt and they would say Eric how about you read and I would just be mortified anxiety fear can anyone relate um, what's interesting is someone studied the effects of COVID and what we're feeling right now and they were talking about what emotions what emotions are we feeling during this season and all that's that's going on what emotions are we feeling and they, and and they, they found that the number one emotion in fact 50 percent of people in this survey found, they said half of all Americans found that anxiety was the number one emotion they were feeling during the season. 32% or a third of people experienced more sadness. Uh, over a quarter, 27% of people said that they felt more fear. 25% said they felt anger and so they had all these emotions and so the question that that i'm so glad you came this morning because we're going to talk about this idea of what do we do with anxiety what do we do with worry what do we do with fear these these emotions um, that we have probably all experienced if you have your bible we've been walking through the book of first peter and today we're going to look at one verse they're like, wait a minute, Eric, you're only going to look at one verse? Yes, it's a small verse, but if we actually lived this verse out, it would have a profound impact in our lives. See, the goal isn't just how much do you know, the goal is how much do you live out God's word. And so 1 Peter chapter 5, a very, very small verse, and it simply says this, cast all of you, and many of you could, could quote this, it's cast all of your anxieties on him. Why? Because he picked, because he cares for you. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you made the sun rise today. We thank you that you sustain all things, that you hold the universe together by the power of your word. We thank you that the gospel still changes lives. We thank you that you still set us free and that it is for freedom that you've come. And so Jesus, I pray this morning that you would set some of us free from anxiety. I pray that we would walk out of here differently because we have encountered you and so, Jesus, would you change us? 
God, you know what every single person that is here needs to hear. And so, Heavenly Father, would you minister and speak to every single person that is here? For we ask this in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Now, anxiety is so complicated. Anxiety is a complicated issue. It can actually be even a physical issue issue. But what is anxiety? Anxiety is, is it's worry or nervousness over the future, mostly, but it can also be the past. We can worry about the past mistakes that we've made, and we can continue, but mostly it's worry is a, this preoccupation with the uncontrollables of life. And has there ever been a time when there have been more uncontrollables in this, in America, in and as individuals. But here's how, here's how worry starts. Here's, here's, how it, here's how it goes down. It starts with a, a thought. It starts with a question, like what if? And then what happens is our mind chases that what if question. Like, like my, my, my check engine light came on. Like what if my car dies? Or if you're a student, what if I don't pass this test? What if my child dies? What if rioting moves to my street? What if my presidential candidate does not win? What if the other guy wins? What if my boss lays me off? What if while I am preaching, a flock of bees come over and they poop all over my head while I am preaching? I watched that happen to my dad once in a amusement park. I will never forget it. It was the funniest thing. And I laughed at him. God's like, you just leave. If it happens, yes. God will something with you. What if, what if my parents get COVID? What if my child gets COVID? Uh, two very close friends of mine have COVID, one in, in Florida and one in uh, Virginia. Uh, the one in Virginia has gotten over it. My, my friend, both of them had mild cases. They had just a small fever. Probably it only lasted maybe uh, six to eight hours of a fever in their entire family. Uh, but my one friend, he had a, that I talked to a couple days ago, he had a fever of like 100.4. He said it lasted six to eight hours. I said, how you feeling? He said, I've, I've been sicker, but I'm just a little bit tired, but not enough to need a nap. I just feel this little bit of uh, tension in my chest. He said, I talked to my doctor, and my doctor said to me, he said, you have less than, he's 48, 47, 48. He said, I have less than 1% chance of dying. And he said, hey, just want you to know you have less than 1% chance of dying. And I was talking to my friend a couple days ago, and here's what he said to me. He said, Eric, it's that 1%. It's that 1% that I'm fixated on. It's the less than 1% that, I, that my mind runs to. I, I feel a little bit of tightness, tightening in my chest, and do I go to the hospital? Do I go to the hospital? Is this just fear? Is this worry? And he said, I think part of my experience is that I'm more concerned about the 1% than the 90%. And then how much wait, of this? And that's what, that's what that fear does. And, I'm, and there are some people that have gotten COVID and it's been horrible. But I think the enemy wants you to think that, that it's going to be, it's, it's, he wants you to fixate on the 1%, become distracted by the 1%. Are there 1% of, of issues? Absolutely. But worry and anxiety always start with the thought. It's our stinking thinking, right? And then our mind can ask a million, 10 million questions. What if? Let me ask you a question. What is your 1% that you're, that's messing with your mind? What is the 1% chances or less than 1% chance in your life that is, that is robbing you of freedom, that you are not living in joy, and you are not living in freedom? In fact, you... Or to choke... And some of us, some of us are being strangled and choked by the less than 1%. So what's your 1%? You know, it says worry is to joy as a vacuum 
is to dirt. Worry is to joy as a vacuum is to dirt. In other words, it will suck you dry. Think of these word pictures, this idea, English word of strangle, to choke. It means to tear apart. It's literally to suck the energy out of your life. The Greek word for anxiety, it means to divide, to tear, and to to, to lose. And that's why we have ulcers and stomach issues sometimes. Now, there's two big thieves um, that, that tear us apart and that, that, that really impact us. Um, the regrets of yesterday. The regrets of yesterday. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that. The regrets of yesterday, but then the uncertainty of tomorrow. Hey, what's going to happen next week? What's going to happen a year from now? And we could just run and run and run. And the problem is that we still have to deal with the problems of today. We still have to deal with the struggles, the challenges, the difficulties of today. And that's why Jesus, in John chapter 14, Jesus comes to his disciples. In John chapter 14, Jesus says this. Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Literally, do not be afraid. In John chapter 14, he says, what what that means is that means it is a choice. It's a choice. See, what happens is it's a choice when our mind starts running down that dark rabbit hole and we start to worry and get consumed when we let our minds just run down that dark hole and what about this and what about this and we just let our minds drift toward whatever you and I will be a miserable wreck wreck I could sit down in a chair and let my mind run and I would be it would rob my joy it would rob my freedom I would be in bondage and in misery if I just sat down and let my mind run that's why second corinthians 10 5 is a verse I've quoted a million million times it's this casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Casting down imaginations. I'm not going to think that thought. I'm not going to go down that path. I'm not going to try to figure out who's going to win the presidential election. I don't know. I'm not going to try to figure out how this is going to work out with COVID. I can't control that. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Just imagine the freedom and the joy that we would, that we would experience if we began to live that out. See, here's what joy does. I mean, here's what it, 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 this idea, our minds just run. Here's, the, here's one of the other problem is the majority of what we worry about never comes true. In fact, I was studying, found that 92%, just let this sink in for a second, 92% of, now 8% does come true. That's what fear is. In fact, I say this often to my children, the acronym of fear, F-E-A-R, fear is false evidence appearing real. See, worry is always an attempt to control that which is uncontrollable. And that is why in 1 Peter 5, verse 7, Peter is saying, cast all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Here's what we do. Here's what we need to do. We need to take and cast it. Cast all of our cares. Cast it all. It's kind of like fishing, though. It's kind of like fishing, right? We cast it out. Hey, God, I give this to you, and we cast it way out, but then we reel it back in. And then we cast it to God, and then we reel it back in. And our minds run with the what if. See, here's the problem. When you borrow the trouble from tomorrow, you increase the burden for today. See, worry is assuming responsibility that God never meant for you to have. See, Eric, how else does, does worry work? Or, 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 or just unpack worry for a second. Okay, here's what worry is. See, God has given you and God has given me this, an, this amazing ability to imagine, to envision, to create, right? It's, it's Disney World. It's Walt Disney that looked at, you know, thousands of acres of swamp land and he had a vision. And he said, I see Disney World here. And I can see how it plays out. Now, some of you are designers and you enjoy designing and you can, you can look at an old dilapidated house and you can say, we're going to knock this wall down and we're going to paint this color here and we're going to do this and move the sink over here. And you can envision those things in your mind and you can actually see it happen. 
And that's what happens with worry. And that's what happens with the future is you and I, we start to envision what about this and what about this and what about this? And our mind runs and runs and runs and runs until it literally just strangles the life right out of us. And we lose the joy of walking with Jesus because we are so consumed and so worried about this thing that most likely will never happen. It will never happen. And we just imagine and we see these things playing out. So Eric, what do we do? What do, what do we do about this? Like, how do we, what do we deal with this? How do we deal with this very real struggle that we all have? Let me just give you a couple things. Number one, the verse says simply this, cast all of your cares on God. Literally give everything that you are fearing to God. He's saying, I want you to involve God. He's saying, I don't want you to live like an atheist. I don't want you to live as if it's all up to you. I want you to recognize that you have a good heavenly father. You are not an orphan. You are not, you have not been abandoned. God has promised, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I want you to cast every care on you, on God, every care. God, I'm worried right now. You know, this week preparing for this message, I was worried about preaching on worry. Isn't that funny? And so literally I got a three by five card and I wrote 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you, Eric. And every time I started, every small little tiny thing I started to worry about, I quoted that verse and I preached God's word to myself because I need to preach to myself every single day because if I'm not preaching God's word to myself, I will drift off and I will be sucked into the worries and the cares of this life. And so, and I found that I experienced tremendous peace as I began to cast everything on God. Hey God, I'm worried about this. I want to give this to you. Hey God, this thing's stealing my joy right now. God, I want to give this to you. Cast all of your anxiety is involving God on him. The second thing is ask what's my part to do. Okay, if you're, if you're a student and, and you have a 12-page paper due in two days and you are worried, you should be. Well, Eric said, don't worry about it. I'm just going to show, I don't know. I'm going to pray. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just pray about it. I'm just going to pray and God's, God's going to write the paper for me. I think that's what we do with God sometimes. Hey, I'm just going to pray about it because I don't want to be inconvenienced and I don't want to do my part. Because like, I'm not doing that. Yes, pray, but do your part. So what's your part? Well, hey, I just lost my job. I'm worried I don't have a job. I'm worried I won't find a job. Well, I don't know if you'll find a job, but how about instead of worrying, how about you spend eight hours a day looking for a job? Well, that's, God's just going to do it. I'm going to sit down, a bag of chips and a TV and a remote, and I'm going to watch all the games, and God's going to get me a job. No, he's not. What's your part? What's your part? So yes, cast all your cares, but, I, but this is so important. God is so practical. God gave you a brain, and he wants you to use it. What's your part? Hey, I'm worried about my relationship with my spouse. Well, okay, do something about it. Take your wife on a date. Get a counselor. That's coming up because you need help addressing that. Yes, pray, but what's your part? What's your part? What's your part? Focus on today. Yes, plan for tomorrow. Yes, yes, plan for tomorrow. Yes, plan for tomorrow. But just remember, throughout the Bible, you'll see that God says, talks about today. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. See, we get into trouble when we want answers for tomorrow. I get into trouble when I want to figure it out tomorrow. Trying to control tomorrow today. Trying to get God's grace for tomorrow today. And Jesus says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have enough to worry about itself. And when we strive and we try and we're trying to get help for tomorrow, today, we have gone further than God has promised. Well, what will happen tomorrow? Will God give me help tomorrow? That's where faith comes in. That's why we're going to I can't control tomorrow. That's where I'm going to trust in the Lord with all of my heart. I'm going to lean not on my own understanding. In all of my ways, I'm going to acknowledge him, his care, his concern, his love. And then he promises that he will direct my path. Today has enough trouble of its own. And we start worrying about tomorrow. When I start worrying about tomorrow, I'm really saying this, God, you can take care of the birds of the air 
And you can make the grass of the ground grow, but I don't know if you can take care of me. We're really living like a practical atheist. Another thing we need to do is re- realize that God cares for you. Cast all, your, cast all of your anxieties on him because he, he, he cares for you. He cares for you. He stores every tear that you have in a bottle. He knows every hair on your head when they are diminishing quickly. The literal translation of cast your cares on him because he cares for you, the direct translation is cast your cares on him because you are his concern. You are his concern. You are his concern. Cast your cares on him because you are his concern. Friends, do not be concerned because God is concerned about you. That's why we need to cast the big things, the little things, the small things, the nagging things in our life. God, I want to involve you. God, I want to lean on you. God, I want to live this day dependent on you. I want to stay close to you, Jesus. I want to, I'm worried about this thing. I just want to give it to you. And I want to do this. I want to cast all the big things because he cares for you. Philippians 4, it says this, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer, that's casting our cares on God and prayers by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Here's what it will do. It will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus. Here's what this looks like. Hey, God, I'm going to cast this on you. And God, I'm so thankful that I don't have to walk through this struggle alone. Hey, God, I'm so thankful that no matter what I face, that you go before me, behind me, and better than that, God, you've laid your hand on me. God, no matter what I face, I will never face anything all alone. And God, I'm so thankful that whatever you do in response to my prayer to you, it is good. Because if I ask for something that is not the right time, God, you're not going to answer that because that is good. And I'm going to rest on you. God, I'm going to cast it all on you, but I'm going to rest that if you say no, that you know best. And I'm going to rest and I'm going to trust and that you know best. And I'm going to simply do my part, but I'm going to rest that you go before me, behind me, and that you lay your hands on me. Bruce, can you throw me that potato over there? Like a baseball. All right. I want you just to imagine there was a lady that was cooking uh, and she actually grabbed the potato out of the oven and it was really hot. And so what she did was, and I'm going to throw it to you, Bruce. Hope we don't hit the cameras. She actually took the, I'll, I'll throw it to Pete. Uh, I, uh, she threw it to her son and then her son, because it was hot, she threw it to her sister and because it was hot, she threw it to her dad and they began to throw the potato around until it actually cooled down. It became a game called hot potato. I want you just to imagine if you and I, when we actually have worries and fears and concerns in our lives, we actually took those cares like a hot potato and began to throw it to God and saying, God, I don't know what to do with this. And God, I'm worried about my kids and I'm worried about tomorrow and I'm worried about their education and I'm worried about what's going on with school. And God, I'm worried about COVID and I'm worried about all these things. And we began to throw like a hot potato, every care, cast all of our cares on God because he cares for us. Imagine what would happen when our minds, and we're saying, no, I'm not going to go down that thought. I'm not going to let my mind go down that way because that's only going to bring destruction. That's only going to bring depression. See, we're depressed because we're thinking depressed thoughts. Whatever you focus on grows. So if we think on fear and worry and what if and what about this, you and I will be miserable. It's a law like gravity. If I let my mind run and I focus on miserable, sad, scary things, I will be depressed. And that's why Isaiah 26, you will keep them in perfect peace whose minds are fixed on you. Why? Because he trusts in you. What are you trusting in? What is your foundation? What is your rock? If you know Jesus Christ, you have the rock of ages that no matter what comes your way, in all these things, we are more than conquerors, even if we die. 
because he is the resurrection and he is the life. And so many of us are living in defeat and despair because we don't know our identity and we don't know who he is. That when we live our lives, we can stand on the rock of ages. That even the worst of storms and the suffering that could be unimaginable, we will never walk through that. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because the God of the universe, he's my dad. And I'm his. And I am his concern. Would you bow your heads? Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. I am his concern. Imagine, God is like, do you not know who I am? I am the great I am. And nothing is impossible. And I still perform miracles. And the gospel still changes lives. And I still set people free from addictions. And I still set people free from bondage. And I will be with you until the very end. I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. I will always be with you. He wants you to experience his peace. So what are you worried about? What's your 1%? What's your 1% that right now you need to confess it? God, I've been doubting you. I've been living like an atheist. I'm not living dependent on you. I'm not casting my cares on you. I think if it's to be, it's up to me. But I'm not an orphan. I'm the son or daughter or child of the living God. He is with me and he will help me. Romans 8, 32. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? I just want you to know that there, the creator of the universe loves you more than I could possibly communicate to you. You are loved beyond description. You are loved with a radical, extravagant love that I cannot even, comp- that I cannot even communicate how great his love. God so loved you that God sent his son to die for your sins, your selfishness, your doubt. He loves you and he wants a relationship with you and he does not want you to live like an orphan. And by trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can find freedom because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And that's what I want for you. If you've never trusted Christ, just say a simple prayer. There's no magic words. It's the intent of your heart. Jesus, I confess that you're Lord. And would you be my Lord? Would you be my Savior? And those of you that that know Jesus, what's your 1%? What is dominating your thinking? What are you worried about? Would you just cast that? Would you just cast that? Would you just cast that care? Whatever is heavy on your heart, whatever burden, whatever you're struggling with, would you just, would you just cast that to him? Would you just say, God, I want to give this to you? I'm tired of you're, you're holding the hot potato of worry and it's burning your fingers. What's burning your fingers? And let it go. Will you let it go? Let not your heart be troubled. It's a choice. What are you holding on to? What regret of the past, what sin, what shame is still holding you down that God wants to set you free from today? What do you need to let go of so you can walk in freedom? What sin of the past do you need to confess, own it, tell somebody, and release it? Where do you need to find freedom from your past? Deal with it. It's like the check engine light is coming on for a reason. Own it, confess it, tell someone, and then release it. God doesn't want you to live in shame. doesn't want you to live in regret. What worry? What's been dominating your mind? Where does your mind naturally drift towards? Take control of your thoughts. Take every thought captive. I'm not thinking those thoughts. I'm not going down that path. You have to make a decision. You have to make a choice. And God's not going to make that for you. You are not a victim. He's waiting on you. He loves you. You are his concern. Dear friends, dear friends, cast all of our anxieties. Imagine the joy and the deep-seated joy and the freedom that we would have as 
with, with one another in our hearts and in our families, if we began to live out 1 Peter 5, 7, I'm going to cast all of my cares this week, this day. Today, I'm going to cast every concern on my good heavenly father. Dad, I'm going to give it to you because I can't do anything with it. And I was never made to put that on my shoulders, but you were. May we do that. May we begin to live that out. Take a three by five card, memorize that verse, dwell on it, think about it. Every time you start to worry, pull it out and look at it. God, I'm going to cast this to you. God, I'm going to cast this to you. I'm going to cast this to you. Every anger, every bitterness, every struggle. Don't live like an orphan. There's a better way. And Jesus is the better way. He loves you. And he is with you. And he will never leave you. And he will never forsake you. And because of those promises, he can work all things together. Even if we face the most horrific things, he can work all things together for good. It may not be good, but he can work it out to be good. And you and I may never understand until we get to heaven, but we can say that one day he will redeem every pain and every hurt and every sorrow because he's just that good. God, we celebrate you. We praise you. What an honor that we can come and worship you this day. God, may your words sink deep into our hearts. And may we not just be hearers, but may we live out your word because you are truth and it's for freedom that you've come to set us free. We celebrate you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.